Okie dokie. Here's a story that I wrote. Okay, so. My marriage. One of those rare, perfect marriages that are only shown in movies. The type of marriage where it seems that the honeymoon phase never ends, even throughout years of being together. My wife. The most graceful, elegant woman I've ever met. She was always positive, always making everyone smile and laugh. She looked beautiful through everything. And I mean everything. She looked beautiful when she slept, when she snored, when she had the little bit of drool in the corner of her mouth. She looked beautiful when her hair was all greasy and she hadn't showered in days. She looked beautiful when she was sick and even throwing up. She looked beautiful even after her death. However, her death ruined me. The motivation to do anything, the meaning of my life, all gone. It's been months. It's been a month, sorry. I haven't showered, haven't left the house, barely sleep, barely eat. I look horrible. I look crazy. I can't do anything without being reminded of her. Your death really broke me, Anna. I feel so much pain every day. Being alone in this house, that was once shared between the both of us. I was so lonely until that one night. You visited me while I was laying in our bed. You told me how much you missed me, how much you loved me, how proud you are of me. Oh, Anna, I was so happy to see you. You laid in the bed with me and we talked and cried until the sun rose the next morning. And then you were gone again. I blinked and you weren't with me once more. In my grief, I started screaming for you to come back, to revisit me. I wasn't ready to lose you a second time, even though you were only back for a night. I'm not religious, but I spent the whole next day praying for you just to come back. I need you in my life. I lay in the bed again, hoping you would come back to me. It took a few hours, but finally we were reunited. You laid next to me, just like you had before. This time, everything was different though. You didn't come to see me, you came to avenge yourself, avenge your death. It wasn't an accident, you told me. Somebody did this to you, and you wanted me to hurt him. And I'll gladly do whatever you say. You told me where he lived, his address. Then we got in the car, and I drove over. I missed our night drive so much. We would always drive around just for the fun of it, with no destination in mind, blasting all our favorite songs. I missed you so much. I got to his house and noticed the TV was on. I made Anna stay in the car. Looking through the windows, I saw him, the man that killed my only happiness, the man that ruined my life. I got a hammer out from my trunk and I walked up to the front door. I pressed the doorbell firmly and stood until I heard a creak. As soon as the door opened, I raised the hammer and smashed it right into his head. It took less effort than I thought it would, but I watched his body fall to the floor. I wasn't satisfied yet. I kept hitting him with the hammer until his face was completely bashed in. He was unrecognizable. That's when a small dog came to the door. The dog began licking the man's face probably an attempt to wake him up the dog looked old and helpless i wasn't gonna leave him there with a dead owner that would be sick i dragged the man's body back into the house while the dog followed still focused on licking his face i then grabbed the dog and walked back to the car to see my wife she loves animals it was so nice seeing her smile in person rather than just looking back through old photos we brought the dog home and decided on the name Scruff. I felt no remorse for the man I killed, no regret on what I did. Seeing my wife happy, seeing her be proud of me was all I needed. We laid down to go to sleep just like old times, but this time with a new family member, Scruff. Scruff had a fascination with licking Anna's face. No matter how hard I tried to keep him away, he always went back. That night, Anna convinced me to pick up my life and go to work the next day. 
I doubt my old job still counts me as an employee. I no called, no showed for a month. I went to a nearby department store the next day, hired on the spot. Anna stood by me all day. No one said anything about her or even looked at her, which I thought was a little weird. Towards the end of the shift, I noticed one of my new coworkers smiling at me. I gave her a smile back and carried on with my day, not giving a second thought about it. However, Anna was not happy with it. The rest of my shift, she gave me looks, sass, and silence. Eventually, I got fed up with it. I snapped. Anna, I'm sorry. How can I make you not upset? She paused. She looked at me in the eyes. Firmly. I mean, finally, she grinned. Kill her. I laughed a slightly humorous laugh. She didn't smile. She can't be serious. She kept rambling on and pestering me about it. Do you want to lose me again? I'll leave. You've already killed one person for me. It's not that big of a deal. Prove your love for me. I eventually caved. I invited the coworker over and killed her right in my own house later that night. This time I used a knife, stabbing, slicing, blood seeping out of all the wounds. I put her body in my closet which Scruff kept scratching at, trying to get to her. At least my Anna is happy. I can't lose her again. Days went on. Everything was normal. I felt happy again. My life had meaning. It had purpose to it. I had my Anna back. Life was perfect. She was perfect. A few nights later, she confessed to me that she was uncomfortable with how many women I had to talk to at work. She knows it's part of my job, but she hates it. Oh, if only there was a way you couldn't see the women you were talking to, she told me. She gave me a cheeky grin, peering over to the knife I had used on my coworker. I knew what she was telling me to do, and I knew if I didn't do it, I would lose her again. I grabbed the knife and headed in front of the mirror. Giving up my eyesight was the only a small cost for keeping my wife. I mean, she can guide me, like, anywhere we go. Who needs eyes anyways? I try to convince myself that it's no big deal as I bring the knife tip closer to my eye. Anna stands behind me in the mirror, rubbing my shoulder and giving me a comforting smile. The blade pierces my eye easily like slicing butter. I push it steadily and slowly, making sure I don't go too deep. Her smile goes bigger. It distracts me from the pain, from the blood streaming like tears down my face. I smile back at her. The things I do for her makes me giggle a little bit. I've killed two people, and now I'm gouging my eyes out with a knife, all for her to be with me. And now I'm laughing in the mirror with my face covered in blood. I look insane my face flashed with red and then blue blue i must be really sleep deprived but that's when i heard the sirens next thing i know i'm in a mental hospital surrounded by nurses calling me crazy saying my wife was never talking to me that she was never there now i may be crazy and blind in one eye but Being back with my wife has made me the happiest I've been in over a month. Until I got hold of the newspaper. The headline read, Man goes crazy after killing his wife and living with her rotting corpse in his bed.